Hi friends, here we are again on Wednesday. It's Earth Day. So I thought today we would celebrate with doing some live painting on this little daisy scarf. You see that I intentionally, when I designed this, connected these floral elements so that as I'm painting on the background, I have smaller patches to paint. And that's one of the little tricks to getting a nice even color. Happy Earth Day, everyone. It's a beautiful day here, just a little bit gloomy, but my, I should uh, post the little video I took of our tulips. The tulips out front of the house finally popped open. I have a mix of different varieties out there and the earliest varieties that open are some of my favorites because they're really bright yellow and like a hot poppy fire engine red orange. They're just stunning. And here in another week or two, the pinks and the reds will start to open. So we usually end up with tulips because of the type of variety uh, that we planted. It was just a package from Brex. It was a, a one of those variety packs. They bloom at different times. So it's kind of like you have tulips for a, a month, maybe a little more depending on the weather. So that's one tiny little quadrant finished. And most of the work of this scarf is already finished, obviously. Um, I thought it might, let's go up here so I know that you can really see. Um, and once again, I've connected some floral elements at their tips and made them overlap just slightly. And part of that is for composition. So I wanted it to have, a, this is a very, very graphic scarf. Obviously it's not, these elements are not meant to be uh, realistic. I was not going for a photorealistic representation of daisies. This is just for fun. I wanted it to be really graphic and girly. Um, but one of the things that can create a little bit of visual interest, even if you're going for something really graphic, is to do a little bit of layering layering with size, as well as putting one element on top of another. So these look a little more sunken behind the large elements. Um, but like I was saying, it's also a cheat in the composition just from a technique point of view so that I don't have quite as much background to fill in and I knew I was going to make mistakes trying to paint the background anyway because it's extremely difficult to speak and paint at the same time and I'm not good at that yet. Plus I'm working vertically when I usually work horizontally so I thought I would make it a little easier on myself this way. And as I've said in the past I really prefer that my brush touch every single inch of the silk you're going to get a lot better coverage with your color that way. Um, and perhaps I should say, depending on the effect you want, it's not necessary if you're, if you're trying to get a really faded watercolor kind of effect and a mottled tone in your background, you might go ahead and add some water instead of dipping into dye to dilute some of the pigment but to still stay within the same hue so I can get to a, a tent. Uh, just by pushing water around in the dye rather than having my brush touch every single fiber of the silk, if that makes sense. And this brush that I'm using is actually um, an, an extremely inexpensive brush. In fact, it was free. It came with a watercolor kit that Dan bought. <laughs> so I said, oh, 
hey, that looks like a really great silk painting brush. Can I have that? And he's so sweet, he gave it to me. He let me take it from him. Reluctantly, but he did. With a smile, he did. Because that's just how he rolls. Very sweet. Usually. <laughs> I think he's watching. That was for his benefit. So I mentioned the brush just because this brush is really good at holding just the right amount of dye. It's not too much so that I'm not dripping. Even with this being vertical, I'm not dripping down with too much dye here, but it's also enough that I can kind of keep going. I don't have to stop and dip and stop and dip. And choosing the right brush for the, the type of project that you're doing and the type of coverage that you want is all just, I think, the individual artist's choice. You have your favorite brushes and you know what your particular brushes are gonna do, so this particular brush I like doing backgrounds with because it it has enough of a hard bristled point to it. It's not super spongy, it's, it's sort of firm. It doesn't have a lot of bounce. And I like that for a background because I can cut my die right into these tiny little crevices and it will, it will not flick droplets or spring dye back up into places where I don't want it. So this is just a, a personal favorite, but I have to admit, I do need to invest in some decent squirrel hair brushes or some nice Sumi brushes because I know that I never felt like my work was good enough to warrant having that high quality of a tool. I mean, some of the brushes I've been looking at are $50 a brush and, you know, I just, I never thought my work was really worth that yet. And I'm getting to some places now that I can see it's good. And if I had proper tools, I think I'm ready to start stepping up into something even better. And, you know, that's just a A process of stepping into elevating what I'm already doing you know kind of take going to that next step I just think that blue is so pretty against those colors very girly, sunny. It's almost a sky blue, but it's not a true sky blue. It's a little bit more muted, uh, maybe a little bit more of a denim blue color. So this is the easy part. Filling in the background really is on something like this. Again, this is extremely graphic. This is not a, a sort of piece like some of the robes that I've done that have a lot of detail in the background. Um, so it's easy in, in that respect to, to just pay attention to what you're doing. Don't get your brush across your resist line, you know, try not to get your color up into your graphic elements and that's about all there is to it. So basically you're coloring inside the lines at this point, all of the work of composition and laying down a nice even line weight with your gutta resist, that's all taken care of. Deciding how you're going to creatively get elements to touch so that you have less of a large mass of background to put dye into so you can get a nice even tone if that's what you're after. Not always after that, but I am this time. You know, all that work is already solved and then you're just laying in background. So it becomes sort of 
simplistic looking. And that's what I hope to share with all of you is just introduce you to silk painting and give you some idea of of what this medium is all about and some of the little things that I'm thinking about when I'm making. And please always remember, there's always a reason to have hope.